Today, we're going to be creating a more efficient mining system using mining nodes. Now, I know what you're thinking. But level up design, you've already made this tutorial. No. The tutorial I made in the past was about using a bunch of different variables to control the node respawns. Inefficient! We're going to be doing all of this using a single variable. Now I do have to point out that the credits to this tutorial does go to Trihan or Trihan over on the RPG Maker forums. He made this really cool text tutorial based on how you can do this and I wanted to share this method with my audience, which is you guys. So let's get right into it. Link in the description. Now to start off with, we want to create our event. So over on the events tab, we're going to double click. And we're just going to call this one Red Rock Ore. Choose an image for it go over into tile set C, and I'm just gonna click on this one here. Then over in the contents, we're just gonna make some hammer sounds, as well as play an animation. It's going to be slash physical, and it's going to be wait for completion, and it's going to appear on this event. Then we're gonna hit okay. Then we're just gonna copy and paste this three times, show some text, we'll make this dim and in the middle of the screen, and it will say, you've mined some red rock. Hit okay and apply. Now we need to add the red rock to the inventory. So what we're going to do is just hit apply on the whole event and go over into the database manager. Over here, what we're going to do is under items, just under reserved, you see some empty spots. I'm just going to put red rock ore. We'll choose an image for it. Yes, that's an egg, I am aware. Back in the event, after you've mined some red rock, we're going to play a sound effect, which is item one. Then we're going to go to the first page, change items, look for red rock ore and increase a constant of one. Now the next part's gonna look really confusing, but I'm gonna go through every single step with you and explain it as best as I possibly can. But if you are a bit intimidated by code, then make sure you don't continue this video if you're a B grade gamer. But if you are an epic gamer, then make sure to like this video. Just scroll down and hit the like button. Here we go. Underneath all of this, you're gonna double click, go over to the third page on the event commands and type script. And then you're gonna put in this script here. What? Let me explain. At the very start of this code, we're checking something. If game variables.value one is equal to zero. So what does this mean? Let's start with the if statement. If is really just asking a question. If there is no fuel in the car. If there is bread in the kitchen. I'm really just asking a prerequisite. If something is happening, then I can move on to something else. So when we have this if statement, what it's really asking is if game variables.value one is equal to zero. Now, what is game variables.value one? What is that? That specific piece of code points to the variables in the game. So if I just open a new event here, double click and go to control variables, you'll see up here I can select all these different variables. Now, when it says game variables.value1, it's pointing directly to this variable here. This is a game variable.value, and the number of that variable is number one. So, what we're doing is we're storing all of our data in this variable right here. If it was game variables.value2, we'd be storing our information in this variable here. But we're storing our information in this variable right here, which is game variables dot value one so what the whole code is asking is does the variable number one equal over here zero and if that answer is yes then we move on to the next bit of code if it's no nothing happens but if the answer is yes then we move on to the next bit of code which is game variables dot set value open bracket one comma open square brace close square brace close bracket, semicolon. So what the funky town does that mean? We already know that game variables is referencing a variable in the engine. So when we say dot set value bracket one, what we're really saying is set the value of game variable one. When we continue this by going comma, open square brace, close square brace, close bracket, what we're really saying is set the game variable one to equal these square brackets. So what the Friday night do those square brackets mean? The square brackets are like an evolution. It's turning a variable into an array. What the fuck is an array? Let's just start by defining what a variable is. A variable is just something that stores data. So I can have variable one, and I can have that store the data of the number one. 
Variable 2 can store the data of the number 2. And if I wanted to, variable 3 would be able to store the data of some text. Hello world. What I can't have with a variable is variable 1 equaling 1, 2, 3, 4. The variable just doesn't handle that. You can store a single piece of information in the variable. So if you wanted multiple different numbers stored to reference, you'd have to go v1, v2, v3, all referencing the different values you wanted them to store. What an array does, an array does store multiple bits of different information. So in an array, you could say 1, 2, 3. So instead of saying variable 1 equals 1, you could say variable 1 equals an array. And that array would point to this, which stores 1, 2, and 3. In my last mining tutorial, I actually did have it set up where I was using a different variable for every different bit of data. That's why the method I'm teaching you today is much more efficient. So, now that we know what an array is, let's go back and have a look at that full first line of code. So this code is saying, if game variables number one is equal to zero, then we want to set that game variable to an array. We want to change it into an array because we want it to store more than one bit of information. Now, the next line of code should help explain the first line of code a bit more, but if you are feeling a bit stuck, then feel free to rewind the video and go watch that whole part again, just to make sure you get a solid understanding of what the code's actually doing. Starting off the next line of code, we have game variables dot value one dot push. What does this mean? What this is saying is that we've just created the array and now we want to put some information into that array. So when it says game variables dot value one, we're saying this variable that is now an array dot push. And what dot push is saying is the information after me is the information that's being put into the array. So the information we're putting into this array is this map ID, this event ID and 500. So let's walk through that. This map ID simply refers to the ID of the map you're on. Each map has a different ID and it's not map zero, map one, map two, map three. If we go into this map here, which is called craftable, up in the corner, you'll see ID zero one two. So when the code says this map ID, what it's storing is this right here. Similarly, when we're storing this event ID, you can see up here on the side, you've got different events for all across the map. We've got the red rock ore, which is this one here, and you can see the ID is 001. So looking in the code, it is storing this map ID, which is 012, this event ID, which is 001, and 500. 500 is just an integer, but this map ID and this variable will auto read from the map you're on. You don't need to specifically define it. This map ID will automatically define map 12. This event ID will automatically define event one. And 500 is you saying, I want to define the number 500. Now after this, we're gonna have a common event doing a bit more, but let me just explain why we're defining these things. We're defining the map ID so later on when it's time to respawn, the controller knows what map to respawn this item on. Then we're defining the event ID because the controller needs to know which event it needs to respawn. And we're defining the integer or the number 500 because part of the code we'll go through later is going to tick down frames and 500 is the amount of frames we want to wait before the item respawns. You can change that, it doesn't have to be 500, it can be any amount of frames you'd like to wait, but for the moment we're defining this map with this item and 500. So once we've got this code in the game, we're going to hit OK on the event. Then what we're going to do is create a self switch. So we're going to be on the first page of the event commands, control self switch, and we're going to turn self switch A on. Then we're going to make a new event page. On that new event page, we're going to choose an image and the image is just going to be, you know, the leftovers after you've mined the rock. We're going to set the conditions for this page to be self switch A on. And we're also gonna have it same as characters. 
Also, on the first page, make sure the priority is the same as the characters. So now what we've got is when we come up to this, you've mined some red rock. Now, if we look in our inventory, we've got some red rock ore. Now, this is not going to respawn because we haven't told it to respawn. So how do we get it to respawn? Over in the database manager, under common events, we're just gonna have a new common event and we're gonna call this or respawn. And its trigger is going to be parallel. And to turn it on, we're just going to turn switch number one on, which is gonna be called or process. So to do that, just make a new event, have it auto run, and then go control switches or process on. Then self switch A on, new event page self switch A. What this does is it turns on the switch or process. And what that does is it turns on this parallel event, which is or respawn. Now, in here, you're going to go to a conditional branch, over to the fourth tab and script. And in script, you're going to type this and hit okay. What this is doing is checking, does the game variable one not equal zero? Does it equal anything else other than zero? And if yes, continue. So you can see we've got our if statement here. What we're going to do is inside the if statement, we're gonna double click, go over to the third tab and type script. Now here, we're gonna enter a few more lines of code. Don't worry, I will go through them with you. All right, let's go through this step by step, starting with the first line of code. For open bracket const or data of game variables dot value one close bracket. What this for statement is doing is essentially it's creating a loop and it's creating a loop for another variable called or data. That variable is about to be defined, but essentially we're just creating a loop. Next we have open brackets const. What const is doing is it's defining a new variable for us to store data in. Now, unlike the previous variable, game variables, which is limited to the engine, const is a variable tied to JavaScript itself. Or data is the name of the constant variable. For the constant variable or data, and or data is the name of it. Of connects our constant variable, which is or data, to our game variable, which is game variables dot value one. We're connecting these variables because we want or data to be able to change one of the values in game variables dot value one. This should all hopefully make sense in a second. On the second line, we simply have or data two minus minus. And what this is saying is in or data, which is of game variables, we want to minus a single integer, which is the minus minus from index two. Now what's index two? If you remember when we were making the array, we made it define three properties, the map ID, the event ID, and the number 500. These different bits of data have their own IDs known as indexes. The first one for map ID is index zero. For event ID, it's index one. And for the integer, it's index two. So when we're saying or data square brackets two minus minus, what we're saying is minus one integer from the index of two. So as you can see, the index of two is returning 500. If we minus one from it, it'll return as 499. Now, because this is a loop and it's a parallel process, what's happening here is every single frame it is minusing one from or data index two, which means every frame, that value of 500 is going down by one. Next, we've got a simple if statement. If or data index two is equal to zero, which is checking to see if this integer here is equal to zero, then we wanna run the rest of this code, but we don't wanna run this code if it hasn't reached zero yet. So let's go through this next bit of code and what it does. The quick explanation is that self switch we turned on earlier for the event to make the rock disappear, that's gonna be turned off. And you could probably guess this just by looking at the code, but game self switches dot set value is the way we tell the computer to turn off a self switch. But how do we tell the computer what self switch to turn off? 
Well, we're pointing it to OR data index 0, which if you remember is the index for the map ID. Then we're pointing it to OR data index 1, which if you'll remember is the ID of the event we're trying to target. And then we're saying A equals false. And that's saying on this map, on this event, turn self switch A to equal false. And the code knows what or data 0 and or data 1 are because we define them as the game variables value 1 in that array. And lastly, we're saying game variables dot value 1 dot remove or data. And what this is doing is it's removing or data from the game variables dot value 1. Or data is the thing that's keeping track of all of the integers as we're counting down. Once it counts down to zero, we don't want it to continue the loop. So once it hits zero, we're going to turn the self switch A off and we're going to remove this loop from that array. I hope I've done a good job on trying to really break it down and explain to you what each different parts of the code are doing. Now we're going to jump into the engine and show you how it all works together. But before we do, if you haven't already, scroll down and hit the subscribe button. Especially if you're interested in content like this to do with RPG Maker and game making in general. Now back over in the engine, we've got our code, we're just going to hit OK. And for all intents and purposes, this is done. So if we hit apply on everything, I should be able to come up to this now, mine it, and it'll respawn. So let's do that. You've mined some red rock. Now that's been mined, it's disappeared, and it's now going through that loop as it counts down the frames. Once it counts down 500 frames, it should respawn, just like that. You can mine it again, and it's going to go through that whole loop again. Now, the good thing about this is that you can copy and paste this event all around the map, and now that loop is going to work for each for each different node. And you'll notice that they all start respawning at a different time, because they're each going into that loop as a different array of information. I hope you guys have enjoyed this tutorial on how to make a more efficient mining system. Catch!